to Power On Podcast. I am one of your hosts. I would have got a 553. Taylor, uh, I actually changed my uh, uh, YouTube channel to Taylor, uh, my whole name there, so it's there. So if you see that, that's that's what it is. But uh, it's still at Mudogato 553. But yeah, exciting times. Good to do that. Anyways, uh, hi, hope everybody's doing well. And with me is the... What I want to go with today. We will go with the whimsical. You are whimsical. I thought you were going to say <laughs> the one seeking room and board at Hotel Dusk. <laughs> nope, nope, I'm not clever enough. I don't that. even know which room I would pick. I, I'd pick the wish room. I got, a, I got a couple wishes. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. I can't even remember them all. We'll, we'll go through some of this stuff, but. So, yeah. um, but yeah, how how you doing there, Mr. Sushibe? I'm hanging in there, and this was my pick of a game, so I'm quite curious to see your thought, or sorry, not see, I guess, but rather hear your thoughts on this game. Because <laughs> Look into send, my mind. You're going to send me speech bubbles that I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to this one. We have uh, just kind of got back in the swing of doing some games and stuff, and this was a little bit of a curveball in the sense that it's a genre we've never really talked about, so I think it's a interesting swerve. Yeah, the, I... I did not remember any of the details, but I do remember this being a very beloved game in the uh, like circles and and YouTube groups and whatnot that uh, we we had frequented mm -hmm. frequented. Um, but yeah, I couldn't. I, it wasn't until the the plot twist kind of revealed itself that I was like, oh yeah, I vaguely sort of remember. This. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until then, so it was kind of nice to be able to go through it without even thinking about it, and then all of a nice, sudden nice. get get slapped in the the forehead with the the reveal. I was like, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you're right. I think this was a somewhat well received game, or, or by the people that were aware of it. Um, the genre kind of got dominated though on the DS, primarily probably by the Ace Attorney series, since mm -hmm. there were f four releases, if you exclude the Miles Edgeworth investigations uh, in, in English, That's at a least. Lot. Yeah, well, because they they were all on GBA, and then they got ported to the DS oh. and then translated to English, so they were only in Japan on the GBA. And I think Apollo Justice was the first, and I may be wrong. I think Apollo Justice was the first DS released that was new. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I, the other three definitely were prior and then brought over. Um, I own the first three. Uh, mm -hmm. I've gotten the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, but I haven't had a chance to play that yet. And then mm -hmm. I did not get to play a few of the others, like the Ace Attorney and um, Leighton crossover, which is impossible to find and excruciatingly expensive now. Of course it is. Yeah, because the 3DS <laughs> had a pretty short shelf life uh, compared to the DS in, in the sense of just length. And I think people got off the 3DS bandwagon pretty quick, actually. You know, there was a big, like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And then they realized it was just a DS with slightly better graphics and 3D that nobody really wanted. <laughs> so, yeah, the 3D aspect probably was the thing that most people were just not into. Mm -hmm. It just became and... a fancy DS, basically. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. So, too bad that some of the the quirks for this game don't work on the 3DS. Found that out. That was pretty exciting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I played yeah, this on a 3DS as well, but I, I because I played it before, I wasn't anticipating that there would have been any changes to. Oh, the... there's something big. There's something real big. And uh, thankfully, uh, I had a DS that I was able to rummage and find. Mm. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have, uh, I would have probably been really, really upset. I mean, there was probably been ways to figure out a way around it, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, leave it until to that point. It's <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful quirk of the game that I want to talk about at some point. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so. I think this game got buried a little bit over time, and I haven't heard anybody talk about this in a very long time. I think it's just been yeah, completely forgotten you'd... since its initial release period and since the ds mm. is really out of people's minds it's kind of a collector's system only now like there's a lot of people collecting for it but i don't know if it's still uh 
sought after for necessarily playing the games as it once was. Well, that and you had uh, mentioned that there was the sequel, but that was when the company f- like fell under yeah. and yeah. there wasn't even a, a proper North American release. No, there wasn't. So I do have a copy of The Last Window, uh, The Secret mm-hmm. of Cape West. I did buy the European um, mm-hmm. uh, edition of the game. Uh, yeah. I, I have yet to open said game because it, <laughs> it just, it's just like a lot of things, you know, you start getting a few and you're like, I'll get to that one. I'll get to that one. And I hadn't gone back to hotel just, desk until now. So yeah. Yeah. And then there, as far as I know, there was a third game that was supposed to, to end the trilogy. Um, mm-hmm. Hence why there's a few uh, plot points that don't necessarily Loose wrap ends. up yeah, at, at the end of this one. It it wraps up well enough, but there's a few where you're like, oh, I guess there must be something more, and they just didn't get to finish it, unfortunately. Yeah, I know uh, the, I want to say it was the creator, or the director, the director had kind of mentioned that, because um, they, they also did, what was that? The There's another game series that's kind of, that they were working on or something. But that they mentioned that Kyle uh, Kyle Hyde has a happy ending. Oh, nice. He will he will he will he will be happy. You just don't get to see it in game form. Sorry, uh, kids. So we don't get to see him <laughs> tie up all his loose ends and uh, right. come to a <laughs> positive conclusion. Yeah. So you just kind of just just imagine it for yourself. <laughs> write your fanfic now. <laughs> yeah, write your fanfic. If if that were the case, I probably would just continue to write him as a begrudging, hard boiled jerk for <laughs> for at least of several more chapters. <laughs> uh, he he is and we talked about this a little bit when we were playing through it and stuff. I I feel slightly personally attacked with <laughs> with Kyle Hyde's character. There there are some quirks in there, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of me. <laughs> just it's just kind of like, uh, like no nonsense in a way. Mm. I, I bit just, stoic. Bit stoic, but also just the the questioning aspect. And I get mm-hmm. it. That's the concept for the game, right? It's, he's, yeah. he's not a detective, but he's a detective. Mm. Um, and that's just that's something I like. I like asking questions and whatnot. I'm, I'm, and I noticed, and I thought it was kind of interesting in the game as well, is that when he gets put on the back foot, he he is not a, a big fan of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of the same way, just because it's like I'm not an interesting person. <laughs> At least I tell myself that. I'm like, yeah, just uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and I thought that was kind of a nice little touch that uh, that when he gets asked things, especially when it comes to like a character like Summer, he's like, uh, no, right? I I stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to go go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, yeah. I'm good. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he can be – well, why don't we start jumping into some of these these positives, I guess. I, I, I would probably okay. surmise that, like you, the same thing. There were several characteristics about Hyde that I felt were reflective of myself as well. And <laughs> he is such he's, – he's written well because you could really take this off the deep end and you could have had profanity in here, right? There could have been a lot of like um, – innuendos and so forth mm-hmm. and they do a good job of somehow sidestepping that and just still conveying this whole character that's brash and rude and <laughs> forthright mm-hmm. and <laughs> but secretive and and still he's still he's still got a an air of mystery to him to some degree but i think you kind of hit it on the head that he's also kind of a non-interesting person in a lot of ways because he's kind of focused his life on this one aspect and just everything else around him is just not that important. He's, he's, he's letting mm-hmm. this one thing continue to eat away at him. Mm. And like, he's just going through the paces of working at a company that he probably wouldn't work at if his boss wasn't somehow connected to kind of his past or like his past life style. Right. He would not very likely work at this place because uh, it kind of gives him a little bit of the taste of what he used to, do for work as a police mm-hmm. officer to, as a detective um, while kind of being under the guise of doing 
I don't know, blue collar work. I don't, I don't know what else to call it. I just like everyday work and everyday job. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, 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 for me, if, if I'm looking at positives, the, the whole character of Kyle Hyde is a, a, a good sort of ease your window, like ease your eyes, but he still has some characteristics about him that are just interesting. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's not like it's some sort of blank slate that you just sort of inject yourself into and then and you run with it. And um, he uh, there there's a thing that tends to happen, and it doesn't happen in this. And I think maybe to its detriment um, is that it's not overly complex with like the questions that are like that I get asked at the end of a chapter kind of thing. Yeah. If, which kind of it's nice that it's in there and it's good that they're in there and stuff. It's just it's uh, there's there's just something I guess off about it because it's like he seems like he, he's not completely stupid but then you get to some of these questions and you're just kind of like uh like did we really need this mm-hmm. um he yeah he's it's it's a it's a interesting thing to have just a this it's somebody who's going through a midlife crisis without really <laughs> <laughs> exhibiting a lot of the like woe is me sort of thing it's just kind of mm-hmm. like yeah whatever man i'm doing this mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, and it's great when he gets into some of these interactions with uh, some of these other characters, not necessarily the ones that agitate him mm-hmm. in the way of, oh, you're annoying, but the ones that he like really warms up to, mm-hmm. like uh, Donono. Yep. Or um, uh, Louis. 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 Yeah, I don't know if it's Louis um, or Louis. Or... Well, he calls him Louis, and then it'll put mm-hmm. it, you know. Um, but uh, – like with that, uh, with well, with him or with um, even with Rosa, Rosa, yeah. Uh, there's, there's this great warmth, and even with like the Melissa, said, Melissa, yep. yeah. Like it's just um, Mila, even Mila. Yeah, Mila to an extent, right? Dep- especially depending on what kind of ending you get. Sure. But uh, it's or uh, with uh, Rachel. <laughs> I really liked it, his uh, his interactions with. Uh, the elderly woman, Helen Parker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just cause, well, cause he's, he's being, it's just funny to see how he's kind of being this little, like, uh, uh, kind of cheeky romancer, but he's doing it with mm. the, with the old woman. And it's like, it's really sweet. It's a mm. daring. It's, he's really just kind of, <laughs> it's, it's just a, a fun quirk. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I really appreciate. And then it's not just, uh, blank slate with that but then there's just some failings here and there where you're just like ah i wish there was a little bit different here it's just Mm -hmm. so you know what's weird about this game well i'll get to two points the first being let me let me take a step back so i i don't mind the sort of questioning at at the end of each chapter um i can Mm -hmm. see that kind of being in our middling focus rather than on the good i always thought Mm -hmm. of it as this game kind of feels a little bit close to an entry point i think for young players to to try like mm-hmm. the point and click and i could see that being helpful and also i thought well what if you put this game down for a while i think it's meant to just kind of refresh if you're playing it straight through yes it doesn't really help you necessarily but if you've put it down and mm-hmm. you're like what was i doing in this chapter what happened like way early in the chapter because i i got through this point i know you can go do a guide and and so forth but i always thought of more as like mm, i think this is just meant to be a little bit of a a help to younger players who might need to kind of keep this information in mind as they're moving forward throughout the game. Maybe, I guess it's sometimes the rudimentary aspect of them or just Mm -hmm. that the fact that some of it just seems like it's really, really unimportant. I don't know if it's just trying to be a red herring for things or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that can really feel like the case for a lot of the front half of the game. Yes. And and I get that it's it's kind of what mysteries are there for, right? They're they're there to f- give you the shaggy shaggy dog so you start going down the wrong path and you're like, "Wait, this doesn't go anywhere." Yeah. Or the you know, red herring and stuff. Like I get that in the same hand. 
it's it's like when you mentioned the um Ace Attorney games, mm -hmm. those games, even though I really have not played them much, from what I've seen of them, it seems like they are very like hyper focused. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And there's uh, a lot of critical here, thinking in some of those courtroom parts. Yeah. You have to be really precise. <laughs> and sometimes you're just guessing because yeah. you're like, I'm really out of ideas here. So you just start presenting random ideas. evidence that you're like, Spaghetti that makes ball. no yeah. sense as to why that would work. But then as they're explaining, you're like, okay, even though I had no clue, it's kind of interesting that they, they took this weird approach to doing this and stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. this game, this game is far more, uh, on this. yeah, it's a little more simplistic yeah. in that. And I, I'm fine with that Which, though. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's exactly, it doesn't hurt it the works. games. Right. Cause it works because a, it's not in a courtroom setting. So mm -hmm. there's not less, there's, Sure, there are stakes, and I think this it might be why um, some people might not really care for it. The stakes aren't like hyper high. Your game mm -hmm. over is, hey, dude, get out! I don't like you. Get out of the. There's really only like, one person who can, yeah, really get you a game over. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, Kyle hides. Like, oh no, I goofed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really, this really goof I goofed. This one. I like how you can I get kicked out of the hotel. In the middle of the night, but somehow it's daytime on the game over screen. <laughs> <laughs> so did he let you stay the night or what? <laughs> well, he there was the he one seemed that... like he wanted you out of there immediately. <laughs> there was the one where I thought it was kind of funny with uh, the one Mila character. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, I'll just go to the door. Yep. And then it's like, hey. Hey, where are you taking her? Get out of why this. Are you, <laughs> why are you creeping yeah. on this lady? That. Yep. You know, and it's like okay, that's that's that is a very fair yeah. question to be asking. When but it's so stupid. You the... literally go up the other stairs and come out the exact same spot. Yeah. You just you you just basically <laughs> avoid it five seconds. But I guess that's how life would work, right? You know, you'd avoid that missed opportunity to be around somebody. Right. Yeah, but but it is kind of funny. You go through the wonder, bang, right away. Get out of this hotel, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. but, it, but it's not like you know oh bloodshot boom boom you know gunfire game over it's yeah. it is a very just kind of like hand it oh, has it, it has a classic feel to to sort of that old hollywood stylized who done it like i'm thinking of something similar to key largo there were stakes in that movie i, I don't know if you've seen that movie but it's it's, it's no, an old not. movie with um humphrey bogart where they're stuck okay. in Key Largo, a tropical storms come through, and uh, not that I'm probably spoiled. I, I won't, because like if anybody does want to see it, but and and I'm a little vague on some of the details, but they're trying to basically solve a whodunit, and it's similar to this, mm -hmm. but there isn't all this crazy action going on and stuff, right? It's kind of that, you know, like the old horror movies, the Universal horror movies, mm -hmm. Dracula and uh, Frankenstein and the you know the Mummy. All those movies were very slow and methodical. But they have purpose right. and, and the way they executed things. And horrors obviously evolved to be a lot more supernatural, looking different now, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And, you know, jump scares and so forth. This this kind of feels that kind of closer to those old PC-style um, point and clicks. Not exactly the same, but kind of similar. Yeah, that and also just the... In a like a cultural sense, a lot of and this can be you can kind of stretch it to other things as well. But it, with um, like Japanese, where it's a very slow boil, like it takes it a long time to boil, and then when it does finally start to boil, it's a really quick thing, and then mm -hmm. it's over. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's how this game feels. It's like there's there's like the the whole thing of him trying to find, you know. Uh, his his former partner, possibly, maybe, ah, the ghosts of the past, mm -hmm. you know, is trying to, and it, for a long time in the game, you're kind of like, how, what's the connection? And there's some, like, odd things here and there, and you're just like, all right, where, when's the shoe going to start to drop? And mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really start until a sizable portion of the game. You're yep. kind of like, okay, all right, all right, now we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if it's, yeah, if, 
I don't mind slow slow boils, and I don't mind stories that have a less than like grandiose. Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, shoot, like thing on the line. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's, it's a super dire situation, but the super dire situation is trying to find something out instead of, oh, the super dire situation is that we've got to stop the nuclear bomb from going off. Mm. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Hyatt's not, he's not doing any sort of <laughs> no. bomb diffusions. No, no. It's, it's all those human interactions and connections and just understanding the, the, those aspects of humanity. Right, rather than mm-hmm. everything doesn't have to be, oh, the the world is going to get hit by a meteor or whatever. Right, doesn't the stakes don't have to always be that that high. The stakes are high enough for these people individually in different ways, and and try mm-hmm. to propose what day to day life does is is closer to this generally. It's it's not going to always be that fantastical. Oh wow! Like I know we want to see that in the media and, and so forth, and it's interesting because it's it's the opposite of what most of our daily running lives look like. Mm-hmm. But this is a bit more of, of uh, there's a realism to that of mm, yeah, like these people have had bad things happen to them that still affect them to this day. Mm. I, a lot of a lot of these characters, not all of them, but. A, a good sizable portion of them do have some kind of troubled past or you know some something to hide i guess to some degree well and i think yeah that's that's also helps try to make a mystery more interesting right there's mm-hmm. there's always the the surface introduction and then the the, the real stuff comes out mm-hmm. and you find it out dun 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 yeah yeah <laughs> And I, I like that this game doesn't try to tie everyone to that main plot thread. Like, you can start to see the one plot thread with, say, like, Summer and Helen Parker. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, is this going to tie back into our main narrative somehow? And perhaps it would have, right? Like, it maybe it does into that second game and, and potentially into what the third game would have been. But it seems like that piece of story just is its own narrative. It's not trying to interweave with all of the other things that are happening with, say, um, Iris and, uh, oh, what's his name? Kevin. Kevin, thank you. Right? They're on their yeah. own narrative. And they, they kind of dip into that main narrative a little bit just because you, you start to question if if the things that are happening to them are somehow related to Hyde and his past. But then you start yeah. to see that they're not. And I'm, I'm really happy that they did that, that it wasn't just, oh, everything has to tie up in a big, perfect bow. And, and, you know, they all have to somehow merge together to make this one important plot piece. And say, no, no, it doesn't have to do that. It's satisfying enough to just see story elements in different angles and different aspects that, that don't have to collide together. As, as somebody who loves their conspiracy theories, it did not wound my heart that they did not. <laughs> I was totally, <laughs> I'm with you. It is nice that it, not everything ties into one another and uh, i mean it just yeah certain things start to fold into one another and you're like okay um like with um jeff angel yeah you're kind of like okay get out of here yeah Yeah, you little you Uh, putz remember i told you he was coming to an end early I was I was implying like ah oh, one of these characters is about to get out of there right. quick. I don't know if you were Merc- satisfied when he <laughs> he was gone earlier. I was like, yeah, good, get out of here. Yeah, it's merciful. I, I was very much he's just the such same a weirdo. Too. <laughs> like he's a weirdo, and then he just gets like just he's just a hyper punk. aggressive. He's punk. Just, he's just, yeah, yeah, he's I, just like a self centered, and, and it's fine. good. It's it's good. Like you want to despise this guy, basically. Right, yeah, it's it's better to be able to at least evoke some sort of emotion or reaction out of out of your player. So to, you know, of course, you, yeah, that's a that's a line you got to straddle. There, mm-hmm. you can't just be like, oh yeah, just hate everybody. That, that, that's a really hard thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, he he was he was obnoxious. No sympathy and it, for myself. Character. No sympathy for him. Like, I mean, I get it. 
Like, okay. Yeah, like he wasn't. Dad's yeah. a jerk. And so, you know, yep. he's lashing out. And I actually really liked, well, like, Hyde stepping in. And he's like, hey, idiot. Like, you, you, you've, you've completely missed the point. Mm-hmm. What, are, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And it's just a, cause that also reflects on, you know, Hyde's character and whatnot, which is like, hey, Hyde, how about you also listen to your own advice on this, some of this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> what are you? He doing? sure likes to dole it out, but he can't take it. <laughs> but it, it, it makes sense because he's so closed off with these other characters. He's constantly questioning them, looking for right. answers because he's starting to suspect. Why are these things starting to tie in? Why am I? He doesn't really suspect anything at first, but just all those little tidbits that you're like, wait a second, is that, why Why was my name used for this or that or right. the other thing? And so he starts to be a little bit, um, I wouldn't say suspicious so much as just inquisitive and curious. And, and there's, there is a level of suspicion for sure, but it's not to the point of, like you said, where it's this big, you know, reveal that it's going to be this big grandiose, like, oh, wow, this is really, uh, large effect this 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 is really affecting a small group of individuals Mm -hmm. but yeah i I find that that works just fine for this game and it's it would be neat to see if we could have got those other games to see there probably would have been some small name drops and stuff but i would like Mm -hmm. to think that they wouldn't have tried to carry over all of these characters and bring them back right right. yeah I, i think they would have kept them back because the actually going back to ace attorney um that kind of happens there's a few th- plot points that do carry on between all three of the, the original trilogy but okay. there's plenty of cases that are just you go through the case and that's it that case doesn't get mm-hmm. brought up again none of the characters get brought up again but once in a while there'll be a character from say the first game in case three he'll come back for a case two in game three but okay. not in a big way but just more of like oh you remember this guy from that game we're just bringing him back just as like a nod and a wink fan because service a little done bit right. yeah not 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 really like <laughs> oh because he was really you know huge part of that what that result needed to be so, yeah yeah but i i would like to think that this game probably does a little bit just because a couple of characters are tied quite closely and they are the main plot line but the others are probably just you know, regulated to being Hotel Dust characters. Mm. Well, and that's the thing with like the premise of it, right? This takes place in L.A. in 97. Or 97, how about 79? 79, yeah. 19, 1979, there we go. December. Um, December, shortly after Christmas. Mm? I don't know why I said it that way, but sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's this... Like, you know, of course it gets more and more and more, but there's just always this, this, this needle that's poking of the, the, the crime syndicate of Nile, right? Mm. Um, and to me, like, this, this seemed like it was an attempt to really start a, a series that honestly, I think it would have been really neat to just uh, just make it into like a anthology mm. book kind of thing. Um, not to say that it, the the game is bad. I'm just saying like I like I I would have been totally fine with just reading it. Would we have missed out on Kyle Hyde looking down at everybody uh, <laughs> through his nose? Yeah. Uh, would we have been Less than graced with the uh, the warm, full beaming smile after eating steak. Yes, we would have missed that. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the only time he has a full beaming smile. Ah, uh, there's t- two times I can okay, think of. Okay, but it's it's, it's very like, limited. He has the sort of smirk smile that comes up here and there. He's kind of looking down. Yeah, like, yeah, I got that. But the the <laughs> you know, oh wow, I am so satisfied beyond belief. So. Face is after the steak. Does he do it after, I think the, after the, the whiskey? Yeah, or, or the, or whiskey. the bur- one of the, bourbon, one of the, yeah. whatever the alcohol he drinks. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. Food good is food. his only satisfaction. Good food and good drink. <laughs> it 
is it is truly truly a shot at the heart <laughs> perhaps in game two he smiles more perhaps as you start to see this character warm up uh, you know through the, the timeline and maybe the last shot in the game over screen of the third game would have been him with that big smile oh well, we know Just... so. <laughs> riding off into the sunset mm-hmm. wait i yeah so the the needle of of Nile being there as well as just the whole bit with uh, Bradley his former partner and whatnot um you could totally see this as setting up uh oh this is there's going to be he's going to go to a whole bunch of silly places and mm-hmm. keep on keep on uncovering new and exciting things about the the obnoxious crime syndicate of mm-hmm. Nile Dun, dun, dun. And finding more people to to make uncomfortable and feel feel bad about themselves. <laughs> right, right. Well, and like to be fair, you know, he he uh, really the the ones he did that to the the worst, or is it was probably the worst one was Martin Summer, and I probably think Summer. Yeah, that works out because of what's going on with his character. Yep. Of just being a complete turd. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how much it's spoiled the territory we want to go in this. I think it's... I mean, it's not a new game necessarily. <laughs> yeah. But, but even like the um, the angel character, right? The same same kind of thing. I think the characters mm-hmm. that you are more likely to dislike, he's a bit more crass with, <laughs> and and you're 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 fine with it. <laughs> Well, right, because it's just like, yeah, because he uses that one line that I I want to use so bad of, you know, it's not every day. Uh, what's what's that? something about? No, I can't even remember. It's about the all oh, the the dumb and stupid line, you know. Oh, uh, you said it earlier. I I know, right? Like it's it's just uh, I don't. It's, it's something. It's not every day you meet someone who's both dumb and stupid, or something. Nah, not quite that. It's something, something similar, like, though. It's like, uh, well, you know, I've I've met dumb before, but it's not every day that you get to see stupid. Or no, I see dumb. I see dumb. I've seen dumb before, but it's not every day you get to meet stupid. And it's just like, <laughs> yes, I understand this. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, <laughs> I I really get you. <laughs> but this guy is as as hard as nails and as hard boiled as as he's trying to be. And again, I think they do a good job of keeping this on a, on a base level without getting too extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, from a writing standpoint, he the guy clearly has a heart of gold. Like he he clearly wants to help when he thinks he can. He tries to always put on this act about being super tough, and and I would imagine, yes, as the as this series would have progressed, that he probably would have started to soften up more. Like mm-hmm. he, I think we would have seen him still be hard and harsh with certain characters, but that I would assume by by the end, you know, he's he's a changed man, right? He's 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 on the new path, kind of thing. He's he's brought himself around, and he's he's at at ease with the the past. Mm-hmm. Or you know, it could be completely wrong. The end of it could have been a hard, a hard luck ending or something, mm-hmm. as as tends to be in you know those types of who done it, hard boiled crime type movies. They don't always end on a positive note. So. I would say I think a lot of times, I think more more so than not. Yeah, they they tend of, not yeah. to. All right. Mm-hmm. That's just sometimes that's just how the cards are played, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The uh. But yeah, and you can see see how how he can be, and the, I think a good example of him being that rough but still um, caring is how he uh, talks with Louis. Because mm-hmm. at first, you know, there's this, and even throughout, there's still this. Uh, there's still the prickly demeanor, mm-hmm. but it softens to where it's more of like, "Hey, dude, focus." Mm-hmm. But they're on like really good terms. <laughs> yeah, by the end, for sure. Like, right, right. I, I like that. It's like, oh yeah, uh, like how he at the bartending bit where he's he's really like 
yeah, you you do good with the you do good with the the spirits there. Yeah. Uh, kind of bit that the the out of place bowling bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it was just funny it was like yeah i'll show you how to bowl i totally whiffed that on the first <laughs> oh the bowling is it's it's pretty clumsy it, it doesn't really respond too well unfortunately <laughs> well, thankfully there's yeah. no consequences either way oh i guttered the first one and then we did the strike on the first one it's like oh this is gonna be bad <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah, this is, totally totally botched that first first try <laughs> I was like, oh, okay yeah <laughs> But it's it's a need to have something like this on the DS, this sort of, they like said, a hard-boiled film noir type kind of genre through the point and click, mm. because I, I, I'm sure there might be something else, but nothing's coming to mind. And I guess on that note, I like the art style here. I like the very mm. sort of everything in the background gets the color, but everything in the foreground with the characters does not, aside from a few hints here and there a few moments of kind of splashes of color mm. i think that's a really unique perspective and a unique approach to this because even though there's color in the um the background and stuff most of this hotel is quite it's earth tones it's mm -hmm. it's very soft it's it's not it's not very in your face i think the closest you'll get to that is maybe like the restaurant and the bar or the, kind of the two of the Am I missing one? Is there anything else you would think that's kind of yeah, the rooftop in a way? Yeah, the rooftop. Of. Yeah, that's true. Because once once it's night and the the neon lights and stuff. Mm. But um, there's not too many. Right? It, it primarily yeah, you're looking at softer. Like type. Iris's room. Iris's room was decked out. One of the rooms. I oh maybe no this the one 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 room one 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 or one one two. Like the, on first the first floor. floor? Yeah, one one. Yeah. One. Yeah, that you don't one, get one, to one. until what chapter nine or whatever it is. So, yeah, pretty it's very late. late. Yeah. But um, it's it had a bit of look to it, a, a bit, bit of coloring and stuff yeah. compared. I think I I want to say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I like this sort of presentation, and it's it was kind of unique at the time. It's probably not. I was, so much say, I was now, waiting but... for the waiting for the wood paneling to show up, since it was seventy nine, right? Was... <laughs> Get some... some more hanging beads, <laughs> lava lamps. <laughs> no, Dunning seems like he's pretty cheap. I don't think he. Uh, <laughs> I think he's done much with the decor in a while. But a, a point that I forgot that I wanted to bring up uh, about with again with Hyde's writing and that focus that you're talking about. If this mm -hmm. game were made today. I think we probably would get less dialogue and we'd probably get more choices, right? More options mm. to, we do get a few when we're talking, but it's, it's, it's limited in scope, right? It's, it's very, you know, in that, that flashing caution sign kind of comes up and you mm -hmm. can kind of ignore it or, you, but then yeah. it'll kind of be like, no, no, you kind of got to push it. And it's like, well, that's kind of dumb. Why are you even bothering to make me do that when it's implied that I'm going to have to do it anyways? Right, but I would assume there would be a lot more. You could really, you know, there's all these games with the morality scale and everything, right? Like you can, mm -hmm. I think I was telling you about Knights of the Old Republic, right, where there's like that old lady that says like my droids are in the, in the <laughs> yeah, in the desert them. or whatever, and so you're like, oh, I'll get them for a fee, and then you get like dark side points immediately, and then you you go get the droids. And then uh, you come back to the old lady and you shake her down for more credits. You're like, oh, I brought them back to you. You need to pay me more. And she's like, oh, it's all I have. And you're like, oh, okay, fine. And then you like destroy the droids and you kill her. Or I think you kill her, then you destroy the droid. <laughs> and you shake her down and you get like triple the dark side points or something like that. <laughs> but this game, I'm glad that, that we don't have that here. I'm glad that it's just, it, it focuses on the narrative. It lets the the development team make the game they wanted to make without being like, oh, there has to be all these branching paths and things you could say that could get you more likely to get kicked out of the hotel or this character won't talk to you now for two chapters because you said this or that. I'm glad that, yeah, I think if it was made today, it would look very different. And this is why I think it would almost, like I said, I don't hate hate the game. But I think this would have been one of those things that would have been a, a, an enjoyable book mm -hmm. to read through or something, mm -hmm. um, just because of how it is a little bit more. It's it's 
it's on rails, but it's not. <laughs> if you, if that makes sense, you're yeah, at least no, able to kind of float about. Way. Yeah, like it's the, and there's not a lot of side stuff that you can really dive and get lost in. Kind of a little oh, bit the here vending and there, machine but nothing. didn't do it for you. Uh, I I'm sorry, I did not do a single thing with that vending machine. You didn't even buy any of the snacks. Nope. Absolutely not. I got business to take care of. I bought a bag of chips and Dunning took them away from me. He's like, thanks, I love chips. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can give Lewis the chocolate bar or one of one of the uh-huh. chocolate, chocolate bars or something. Or I don't know. You can you can give some of the items to the caregiver. It doesn't right. do anything other than you get like a couple of pieces of text. But yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm good. Uh, that and you know finding the little. Um, tiles the little sheets with the the number on them yeah which are all randomized uh, every time which which is yeah so it's just like oh, okay these are it's okay i get it it's hard to really add in some extra side content in a game like this mm-hmm. um so when you have things like that or um just like the the weird bowling or the matches game Yep. kind of thing it's just like okay yeah there's not really a I know sort of consequence to them but they're just kind mm-hmm. of little bits but again i i don't mind that i know this is again for a 2007 game it's kind of in, in in its infancy when it kind of comes to that like there were some games that were introducing that morality scale and stuff around that time like that star wars fable but those were usually much bigger budget games on mm-hmm. on you know heavier hardware and stuff but today, this game, you know, the expectation would be way hard. If this game came out now, they'd be like, wow, this is such a simple game and it doesn't have anything to it. And That's the thing. I don't care for the morality thing. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a bit overplayed. Mm-hmm. Overplayed and just sort of not an interesting thing. Because mm-hmm. it's like you you get to eat your cake and have it too. Mm-hmm. Of, well, I can go and do the, the good stuff. Oh, well, I can go and do the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I can do the in-between or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's like, it to me, I feel like that weakens a narrative. Of what, maybe not always, but especially with something like this. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's a, I think it weakens it a bit. It's like, just pick a lane. Go with it. Mm-hmm. See with, see how that, that, that cue ball of that main character bounces around on the billiard table like Mm -hmm. see where that goes i think that makes it more interesting more dynamic than to be able to just kind of go this way or do this way or do this it's like eh Mm -hmm. because then it's like what what are you really trying to tell Mm -hmm. you're just trying to tell everything and it's just like that's there's uh, to me it's like you're not really if you're trying to tell everything you're not telling anything at all right Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I personally am I'm okay, you know, it's, sometimes it's fun to play those games that have that and stuff, and sometimes it's nice to just play this where it's, it's you know, the set story is there, it kind of mm. teases that there's the options, which I know, again, could probably be a little off-putting for some people of, well, you're kind of making it seem like I should have a little more influence here than I'm actually mm. getting, but I, I again, I, I think you're not wrong saying like it's it's kind of just pretty straightforward visual novel in a way but it, it, all of the the mishmash of stuff that's going on in this game is intriguing enough to to keep it fresh it, it gets a little stale especially at the beginning and then once the ball's rolling you're like okay finally we're we're starting to move along and everybody kind of gets their own chapter to kind of wrap up their story and, and so forth and then you're like okay it's just that slow momentum at the beginning mm-hmm. of really kind of I could see it pulling somebody out too quickly. Right, and I and I think uh, we had talked about it when I was getting through it because I was lagging a little bit behind mm-hmm. um, compared to you. I think part of that also is that you want to like inspect everything mm-hmm. and then look at everything. So it does, you know, you do that and it it will help speed up the process on the back, or maybe not just the back end, but at least just later on in it. Um, but you don't have to do that mm-hmm. <laughs> necessarily. You can, you can, you don't have to be like, oh, let's look at the couch. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna make a snarky comment about oh, the couch. There's, 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 yeah, but that's just it. 
that that does make this game again i know there's a lot of new games where you can explore like everything it's not just looking at the couch anymore it's like you can overturn the cushions you can open the cushions you can find the loose change you can you know like like this game has a little bit of that and i'm i'm glad it doesn't go that off the deep end of explore every nook and cranny of said world and i know some people love that and love falling into that trap of playing mm-hmm. a game for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours to find every single secret thing like i think of those um what's the offshoot of grand theft auto there the the wild west one um red dead thank you red dead red dead seems to really thrive in that type of environment right and i know a lot of people like that about that of finding Mm -hmm. you know i've seen all those kind of weird videos of like you can find uh the guy who lives in the cave that seems to be the devil and stuff like that (laughs) like okay (laughs) that's that's there's some interesting aspects to it but i i like that this game is small in scope it's got a, a narrative it pushes through with the narrative and you get to just learn about each of these strands along the way and then you're done mm. yeah i agree with that yeah i i, I gotta ask what do you think uh-huh. about the music in this game i liked it and i like the the hey don't goof up this because you get to, you know, yeah, you have these back and forth Q, Q and A sorts of things, but then there's the, you know, crutch moment of, hey, mm. do not goof this up. Yep. You need to be on your A game on stuff. And it's a little obtuse, I think, at times where you're kind of like, mm, I don't know about this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if, if the song that plays there is probably probably my favorite in the game. It's okay. just like this this heightened sense of all right, I need to to buckle down and actually answer this appropriately mm. and understand why you know when you make the accusation, being able to you know choose the question that leads into hey which accusation like how are you going to frame this mm-hmm. uh, and frame it pro- uh, like appropriately and then just some of the other tunes were, were nice i kind of didn't like the m- menu tune not okay. that i didn't like the tune itself, I, I like that just one. that it like well just that it it that it is a new tune i kind of wish that would just that was a tune elsewhere and and, and stuff i i don't know there was just mm-hmm. something about bringing up the little menu screen or something if i wanted to save or mm-hmm. was looking at something and it just made this new tune because it sort of cut the other music oddly mm-hmm. i felt okay. it'd be a little disjointed mm-hmm. what about yourself would you yeah I, I like this soundtrack because again, it offers something a little bit different. I think it fits the, the tone well. That very jazzy, kind of slow pace in a lot of the, the tunes, but they're kind of a little bit catchy, but not overtly. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it very much fits the tone. And again, it kind of reminds me of what you might hear in, let's say, in a movie from between the late '30s up to the maybe even to the early '60s. That, that kind of. Mm-hmm kind of a bit of a film noir but kind of like you know jazz seemed to really kind of fit that mold of hollywood for a long time not so much now Mm -hmm. and it fits this game really well and like to this day i still have the you know the main tune when you're just kind of wandering around Mm. like it's just because you hear it so (laughs) much (laughs) okay You, you can't not hear that song in your head after playing this i know hyde needs to uh uh, walk a little lighter, maybe. That's that's certainly something. <laughs> yes. It's like, how is he able to like go un- undetected? He's like stomping everywhere. It's like, calm down, make your feet up. Yeah, you know, he's a little bit more light footed. Yeah, for such a tough, tough as nails, you know, former detective too. When he gets the grills from, you know, the gears from Dunning, just that look on his face, like. Like <laughs> as he's getting thrown out <laughs> is pretty funny, but um, I think that's a for me that's a good stretch of the, the the positives. I think the only positive is just the overall writing. I think you know you get good senses of these characters, and I didn't find it 
clunky. I, I found most of it pretty appropriate mm-hmm. and very in tune for each character. It didn't mm-hmm. feel like there was lines that were out of place. Like it felt they had a pretty good grasp on what each character would act like. There's a couple that kind of get a bit eh, like as time goes on and you're kind of eh, like Kevin. Kevin's a kind of a weird one. I guess that he would have been probably a harder character to write for because he's sort of he yeah, emotionally he's so kind of unstable. Right. Whereas the others are, are kind of confident in most of their personality, I, I suppose. Um that even when there is a switch, like if you you know you call them out on something or you've kind of discovered what their secret is per se, mm-hmm. but he seems to be the most sort of out of place, difficult character to kind of grasp and and probably to write for. But as a mm-hmm. whole, I I like the writing, uh, especially for the dialogue pieces. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I do do as well. Like I said, it's. For the most part, yeah, there's, I, like, Mila felt really, you know, I know she doesn't have quite a lot, mm-hmm. but, uh, what little bit is there, meh, I'm not too keen on, hey, here, write in this notepad, mm-hmm. thanks. And how to I, I, I physically kind of, touch the DS every time to get every the notepad. Time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, please stop. Yeah. I, <laughs> just uh, so um the i yeah uh, wasn't really too much else that i i i thought iris was another one that just seemed kind of off to me hmm. a little bit or just weak in general really i like I that she's so standoffish with him all the time until you know you kind of discover what's going on for her i yeah. i kind of like it because it's it's very different than all the other characters. Basically everybody except maybe Dunning kind of is taken aback by Hyde, right? They're kind of like, whoa. Well, uh, she's Jeff's kind of a little bit more abrasive. He's yeah. Got that kind of jerkishness, but he's even um, more like she, she kind of throws some, some of that shade back at him. Whereas Jeff is just mm. obnoxious, right? Just yelling at people and stomping <laughs> off and running away where she'll say something kind of in the same vein of, of being cheeky back to him. I, and I like. Well, that. I think you also get that with Rosa and Dunning to a degree. Dunning for sure. Rosa sort of. Yeah, Rosa, yes, but I, I don't think quite to the same degree as she is because she's a little mm. bit more prissy about it. Yeah. I I don't know. She just kind of. She doesn't like that there, her yeah. advances didn't work. <laughs> Kyle will be uh, fooled, tempted by no. <laughs> No one. <laughs> Except know, a yeah, good steak. Just, yeah, good steak. It's a bourbon. <laughs> yes, that is that is it. Um, I don't know. There's just something she just didn't really move the needle much in in, in the way of impressionable mm-hmm. to me. It was kind of like okay, okay. I think if I, I I would agree with that more so when you get to the reveal for her. Like I don't quite mm. buy into the sort of oh my sister like it that that feels a bit abrupt because of how kind of overly confident she kind of seems or kind of you know that self like um like she's proud of herself kind of kind of attitude, right? Was she mm. princess kind of attitude, I think she says at one point or something. Yeah, it's it's a little disjointed to go mm. from one to the other, but mm. in the same hand it's like uh, I guess that's kind of unfair, but mm. people can re re uh, remold themselves and whatnot, but uh uh unfortunately it feels like most of the time well, you get to a certain point, it's like, this is who this person is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Did you have a favorite character or, or a couple of characters or, or dislike um, Oh, yeah. I hate Martin Summer. <laughs> I, I just want to, like, every time that dude, I felt Hyde's just complete, leave me alone, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... just 
like oh this is this is your pen no it's not thanks i it, it got back to its proper owner or at least somebody <laughs> mm-hmm. actually was in possession of a kind of thing mm-hmm. um yeah, he was he was certainly my least. I like the interactions with like uh, Hyde and Melissa because mm-hmm. at first it's very just like shut up, kid. Yeah. It's like how you doing, squirt? Get out of here. <laughs> you can't play on these uh, stairs. Right, right. Uh, that and uh, him and Louis. I liked the the bits with Louis because mm-hmm. there's a lot of you know, a lot going on with with that. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, those those are those are ones I would mention. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I would say I would agree with those. I think those are good ones. I I like Louis a lot as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned it earlier, like the Helen Parker is not a lot in the game, and and it's funny, you know, because they give her the eye patch and stuff, so they try to make her seem more suspicious than she leads on. But you don't really mm-hmm. that thread doesn't at least you know. Seemingly, at least in this game, it doesn't go much further than that. But they have some nice interactions, even though there's not many of them. They do. Yep. And I think that's the thing, though, is that there's not a lot with her. It's kind of sparse. Mm-hmm. So even though they're like they're enjoyable, it's just kind of like I just kind of wish there was a bit more. Mm. Yep. Yep. For sure. And because there's not really a full clo- like sense of closure with that character in summer i would wonder Mm -hmm. if they do come up later on somehow with within the nile issue um lewis uh, like louis must at some point right with his friend being killed and everything Mm -hmm. um the the most bizarre one to me is the connection with hyde's employer so not so much rachel but ed Uh uh-huh the dialogue for Ed is, it, it feels fishy. Like, it feels like there's, like, I would wonder if Ed is, you know, he was, you know, actually part of Nile all along and sending, you know, Hyde on this wild goose chase. Because he just, dun, dun, dun. well, any any time is, you know, is the old man in? No, he's not here. And then when he calls him back, it's after, like, two in the morning when you finally have, like, a number of conversations. And we don't see mm-hmm. his face. It's just, yeah, there's just... It's it's intriguing because you're wondering what what is there's more to this there has to be more to this and right. he could just be you know the, the voice on the phone I suppose but it just feels that there must be more. Ah, uh, he probably should play the sequel then. <laughs> I I don't think that that would have even concluded by that point. I feel like it wouldn't conclude until the, if they got to the third game. Ah. Uh. It, it just feels I, like there's I, probably a long piece there that that you, yeah, you, know, you only get tidbits now and then, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't until the the true reveal. Yeah, and I almost don't want to play the sequel because it's like, well, you're never gonna get the 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 real results or the ending at this point. So mm. unless we crowdfund it somehow. So. <laughs> oh, I don't think that would work because uh, nope. who who has the rights to it? Is it nin- under Nintendo's? I don't know, actually. Baleful glaze. <laughs> glaze. Baleful gaze there. Yeah, and I don't know. Nintendo likes to leave things in the vault for ever, right? Once, once Looking at you, F Zero. Oh, geez. Yeah, let's not even. <laughs> My poor F Zero. <laughs> yeah. You can get a you can get a stage in Mario Kart Eight. Yeah. There's yeah. Two of them. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> Is there one in that Smash Brothers too? I think there's a thing in there too. Oh yeah. Out. There's. there's... Yeah, there's some. I think I've seen stages. It's here and there, but yeah, it's too bad. Well, they went out with a bang. Like that, GX is just in, insanely intense. So it's 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 so good. It was like too it's, intense. It's yeah, yeah. Well, they they got Sega behind it. So what were you expecting? <laughs> it's gonna go out with a bang for sure. Um, yeah, I think I'm 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 good to move into some of the other bits and pieces here if you're ready. I am. All right. So, what what is some of the stuff that sort of sits on the fence or in that middling zone for you, where you're kind of like, eh, it's not not horrible, but I'm I'm not super. I wish you could move faster, for the love of God. <laughs> yeah. Just something, just a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. Come on, buddy. 
Yeah. <laughs> so did you use the stylus to move a lot, or did you use I the used directional the stylus. pad? Okay, I used the directional I used pad. I the stylus a lot. Okay. okay. Yeah, it, it's just like, come on. For the love of, come on. Come on. Don't yeah, it, was, it would be nice. <laughs> it, it's funny, he seemed to walk faster when he was paired with somebody. <laughs> did it not feel like it was moving a little bit quicker? Yeah, no. He, maybe it's just my perception, yeah, but... It's like, why couldn't you just hey, tag along with Helen Parker the whole way through and buddy cop it all the way? <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, you know, the, the eye patch is not really an eye patch. It's like an x-ray vision thing. She's like, I see through you, Summer. I see through you. Oh, boy. You stole my son's oh, pen. No. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, I would say, I would say the, uh, that, that's, that's a, uh, like it it could have been worse it's it could have been worse yeah um it just it really just a little bit faster would have been nice yep um some i don't know if i want to say it's like hyper negative but like some of the that that last stretch of uh, in the the room that is running out of air. Yep. A little tough. Mm -hmm. It's that it, that uh, you you you've, you've got to you really need to know and in needing to know, I did not have a black light. Mm. So, on the original DS, you can, because I looked this up because I was like I there's this sheet of paper. And outside of eating it, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. <laughs> like, I'm, I am completely befuddled. Go over with, it if you with will. Rosa steak sauce. You know. <laughs> right? And I'm just kind of like, I mm. don't know what to do. And then I was like, okay, I've got to look this up because I'm like, I'm I'm dumb, mm. evidently. It's not no, that it's, I'm dumb. It's tricky. I'm just it, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really give you too much to go on there. Right, and it's just ill-equipped. So I didn't have a black light. But like the DS, the original DS, if you hold it a certain way, you can oh, yes. see. I heard that. Yeah, that does not work with the 3DS. Mm. So mm. yeah, I had to find and charge my DS enough to be able to do that. Oh okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, hmm. that was fun. Love that. Well, to their defense. They couldn't see far enough into the future to know that the 3DS was not going to have the ability I, to. Well, it's less less that and more of just the uh, where the heck was the black light? Because uh, I don't know where that is. Yeah, it was in uh, was it in his tool office? I forget where it is now. Yeah, I can't remember where it was now. Which I find interesting because I know you're saying you picked up like every object in every room and inspected well, I everything, certainly did. and for some right. reason you you didn't. For whatever reason, I just didn't well, no, get into your got inventory. To the back half, back half of the game, I certainly didn't. Mm. I don't even, yeah, I don't even like. I didn't even know there was a, a black light in the game. Mm. <laughs> so I was kind of like, oh shoot, I'm in trouble. Mm. <laughs> I'm in real big trouble because I don't yeah. have like a save really. <laughs> and I'm running out of air. Close to it. Yeah, it's like, oh no. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That I I I don't quite. Like I don't dislike the the puzzle with it the the out of air thing. I don't know if it's triggered by how many times you look at something or interact with something. No, I think it's a it's on a time limit, I believe. Because you can if you just stand of, there, he will black out. Uh, yeah. So I eh, like I don't I don't mind it. I just. There's there's some things on it. I'm just like I don't know if I I can't I don't I don't like this black light thing at all. Mm. It's stuck stuck in my crawl, and I mean it. Good that they had a way of getting around it, mm. but I mean it's similar to because I I looked this up because I don't know how you unlock the different like there's like the two endings and then there's an ending if you play through it again For a second time yeah yeah um. But like I got one ending, I was like, okay, how, how do you get the other one? And people are just kind of shrug. Oh, we're well, not a hundred percent certain. Good luck. We don't know. Mm. Um, it could be how you wake up Mila after she faints. Mm. It could be how many game overs you get. Mm. Uh, it's probably maybe it's a combination. No of game both. over 
overs is, is probably because I know if you get no game overs when you do a new game, then you'll get like mm-hmm. the quote unquote true ending or whatever, right? Yeah. So it's it's probably that, but I, I'm sure we both got the same ending. I'm assuming. So. Where he just had all heads off by himself. Oh no! Then we did not get the same ending. No, because yeah, I goofed plenty of times. So and... I did too, but I still I left with Mila. So. Okay. No. Uh, so. Hmm. Anyways, I mean, minor <sighs> gripe, I guess, right? Like it doesn't really affect the overall scope of the game. I kind of like that he leaves by himself. I think that's 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 mm. fitting. I was I was fine with that. And then I <laughs> turns well, his nose up at her and <laughs> gets in. Well, but this, it just seemed it just seemed really weird. Mm. I'm I'm gonna go with the weird thing that she would tag along. Mm. Like it just it seems a little a little out of place. A little bit. I would find it more out of place the fact that Dunning stopped you the first time and was like, "Hey, freak, what are you walking around in here with her for?" And then. Let's her get in a car. <laughs> get, well, yeah, that's why I mean. That's what I'm kind of like. I think it's a little bit. I don't care. You have this heart to heart with Dunning at that point, and mm. you know you you lord the secret over him. Yeah. It's more of like, yeah, no, nah, it's it's uh, it, it 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 to me it fits that he leaves by himself. Like mm. it's just like, all right, I'm, my business is done here. I'm taking a break. Mm. Out of here. I. <laughs> one one final nosed upturn. <laughs> <laughs> what is that that um, Rowan Atkinson was like? I spurn you like I spurn a rabid dog. <laughs> or turn I turn my nose up at you like you're a rabid dog. I forget what he says, anyways. But, um, I don't have too many. Uh, I wish that the music selection could have been a bit more varied throughout the game. Because as I said, you kind of get that one particular looped song, like when he's mm-hmm. investigating and walking around, gets played a lot. Um, so a little bit more variance in, in the music, and, and I don't know how small of a DS cart this is, so there might have been limited space, so that could be why it's so much repetition. Um, yeah, I, and I'm, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm on the fence of, do I wish that the hotel had more places to explore on some hands mm-hmm. yes and then on others i'm glad that you don't get so sidetracked going into every single room all the time and dealing with the people in the room all the time like even though you kind of early on in the game don't know what to do so you're just knocking on doors constantly and right. checking if they're open and so forth so imagine if this hotel was bigger and how much easier you could have been lost and, and whatever um but uh, and just maybe a little bit more like you're saying about the black light a little bit more of a semblance of, hey, that might be a tool that that could help you out, rather than have to touch and 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 explore every nook and cranny in in the rooms. Like thankfully, only certain things highlight, so it's not like every everything. But well, it, there's I enough mean, of it. like it's a. Just, mm, it's just wouldn't uh, have guessed I could pick that up and take it. Yeah, it's just like I'm a little. Confused, confuddled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why well, couldn't? I get, yeah, it didn't have to like shiny, shiny. It just seemed like it to have. Mm, I guess technically, when you're having a deal with Jeff, you you need to have that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's because it's like right there. Mm-hmm. Here, it's like ah, it's a chapter before. Mm-hmm. Good luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm stuck down here. Not a lot of luck I get. I'm done. I'm right. in trouble. Right. Ah. Yeah, and, and it is a little bit slightly out of place just because there isn't really any other event prior to that to imply like mm. pressure to do something and pressure mm. to, to get through a piece. It's really the only time that you get that. Mm. But again, it could have been a lot worse and yeah, we got through it obviously. So, so yeah. I, I think um, uh, I'm good for negatives if you're ready to jump on those. Or do you have some more? I was going to say, stuff? kind of um, a little. Um, seesaw on is just the. the I guess the bit with the plot twist and everything. Mm-hmm. Um. 
not that I hate it or anything of the sorts. And it's, I like the idea of it. Um, because you see this all the time. You see this all the time nowadays. <laughs> where, where it's like, how convenient that, uh, certain things are propped and inflated. Mm. And then quickly sold off. Mm. Really wonderful luck that some people have. Mm. It's an amazing thing. So exciting. <laughs> Doesn't fill me with any sort of rage whatsoever. Good art for those people. Really blessed. <laughs> but, um, the, uh, I guess the one thing about that, uh, it's just sort of, hmm, I don't know how to put it. There's just something, I guess, a little, and maybe because it is the stakes aren't like super high that it just almost feels like a, not like a necessarily a pop, but the, the air of the balloon just kind of just gets leaked out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're like, just, the, and that's the just sort of how sounding they... balloon, but not not with the <laughs> the excess of it flying all around the room, and you're trying to get. <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't quite fart, unless you, you know, you know, one of the, the ass cheeks is covering it up. It's just just in a certain way, but um, it's it's, it's just I don't know the the from climax to falling action, it, it was just a little. You know, you go you go up the steep climb, and then the, the the slide down is is more like uh just very gradual as opposed to mm-hmm. you know we're going we're going swooping down. Foof. But right. like you said, it could also be because of the type of story it is with the the um what's at stake isn't super dire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I think that's a fairly fair assessment because it almost feels that there could have been a bit more, you know, a member of Nile shows up or something, right? That's a little bit heightened. Instead, we just kind of get that here's the story and here's why, you know, you keep hearing about this famous painter mm-hmm. and what, what kind of got cooked up for all of that and and so forth and, and the mm-hmm. sort of surroundings of that. And it's nice that we get a reveal that one of the characters is completely closely tied to that, which ties now into Louie, which ties into Bradley, which ties into Hyde, which mm. is, is nice. But yeah, I, I, I don't mind it as, as you just put it that I think it still flows with the story. Cause if it was something really bombastic of like, and then six members of Nile burst in and, <laughs> and you know, dr- guns are blazing. Tap to shoot them all. Yeah. <laughs> gun, guns drawn and, and like had like this intense, showdown where Hyde had to kind of use his wits to talk them out of doing anything drastic in them, just like taking Mila and leaving or something, right? Like, Mm. I think, you know, that some people might have preferred a big cliffhanger like that, but I think closer to the ending you got saying, you know, Hyde drives away, that kind of would spoil it. I think it's, it's, it's nice that it's just in a pocket. It's its own pocket and, Perhaps there is more that might come come through later, but just that the ending is as soft as the beginning is. I like that it's simplified, but I can see well, where why it sits in the middle. Just like, like in a it's, feeling. It's just kind yeah, of like... it's it's you're not walking out, you know, fist in the air like yeah, like it's it's not that, <laughs> but it's not totally walking out like well that was a complete downer. Like it's not that mm. either. It's somewhere right. in between. So yeah, I think that's fair. So, yeah, things you don't like. I don't have a ton. I mean, it's mostly surrounded some of the puzzles, right, that are just a little bit too complicated to figure out and the finicky nature of the touchscreen. Um, I think the yeah, big one so. that we'll both probably hit upon is the the letter falling out of the box is probably one that will frustrate most people, like it frustrated me, right, trying to tap that thing to... To fall out of there is yeah, the bookmark. Oh, the bookmark, sorry, yeah, not the letters. Yeah. The bookmark, the, the letters later on. Um, so like that, uh, I know we were talking about the crowbar. 
Uh, it's funny, you can just you can just rip the paper, actually. Like, you can go to pull the paper, it'll just rip. You'll get, like, half of the paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and then you can still lift up the the cabinet to get, get the rest of the paper. Or you could just mm. let the cabinet get the paper. But, yeah, you, you kind of... There's a few of those things where you, you don't quite know, like, how long do I have to hold this to get that trigger where it, get, it gives you, like, the success um, audio. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's a little bit annoying or like digging in the garbage can right where you're pulling out the sheets of paper to get the uh, right. to get the gun so yeah there's yeah. just a few things like that where like you kind of know you got to do something but it's just not making enough sense to you to be like is that is that what I do like that's 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 kind of frustrating on several parts of the game it's a little little obtuse where you're just like uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but thankfully, some of the puzzles also have uh, alternatives. Mm-hmm. Like, I know you said, okay, it was tough to not have the black light, but if you had the DS and you could, like, there was, there were typically more than one solution, at least two in most cases. So at mm-hmm. least there's that as well. Like, if you, if your brain's thinking one way, you might still get it right because you can use another item so that's kind of at least helpful to some degree it wasn't mm-hmm. just strictly has to be that one item in some, some cases it made sense that it had to be strictly that item but often if you had a couple of things in combination you could try some different things and it might work out so yeah yeah um i know we touched on it before bowling is awful yes yeah, <laughs> i know it's such a minor thing mm-hmm. like in the game but it's just like it is very awful to control that. Yeah, yeah. And Louis mentions it early on. What is it, like maybe chapter... Is it chapter 7 that the bar opens? Uh, yes. It's like 9 o'clock, so it's either 6 mm. or 7. And he mentions something about it. You know, like, what is this all about? And then nothing comes of it, and then it's just randomly, uh, go bowling. <laughs> like, oh, okay. You got to you know, defend your words, right? You can't just be chirping. got to... Gotta back that up. Gotta just back like, it up yeah. with bowling in the hallway for no apparent reason. <laughs> just yeah, to have Rosa bowling. come and chew you out for it. Uh, rightfully so. Yeah. Like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, seriously, you what are next. you doing? You, you, <laughs> what's wrong with you bowling at 11 o'clock at night in the hallway? Hide. Don't you know better? You do know better. What are you doing? I'm surprised he didn't just say something like, I'm drunk. Like, like, because you've been drinking so much earlier. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I I would agree with that. I think the bowling is kind of kind of obnoxious. Um, Again, there are some points in the game where you just you're kind of wanderingly aimlessly around, and again, as I said, thankfully the hotel is not so big that you can probably Mm -hmm. murk your way through it. But it still can be a bit frustrating at times to not really have a clue especially early in the game. I, I found around mid to late chapter four where you're like, okay, I'm really starting to understand like who should be the next person to go to aside from a few puzzles here and there. But the mm-hmm. first chunk of the game is quite slow. And you, especially that first chapter, you're like, I, what am I doing? You're just wandering around aimlessly, it feels, for a long portion. It's the longest half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very long. Like you talk to Dunning, and then you walk away. He's still standing there, and then he yeah, he like to do all the proper things to trigger everything. It just it does not flow well. It's not a good first step to really keep you engaged to want to play. But those who will stick it out mm. will most likely enjoy the rest. But yeah, it's yeah, I could have, I, it's, I it's a, a hard hard first step. It's a it's a, a far mm-hmm. drop. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that really stuck in my craw. Can't quite think of anything. Yeah, you don't get to explore some of the rooms maybe as much as would be nice to. Like, you don't really get much time in Dunning's room. You don't really get any time in Rose's room. I don't really like the idea of, like, going into the rooms and having to walk up to them to talk to them. Like, you know, those kind of scenarios? Oh, Summer, you yeah. get that. Iris, you get that. Uh, Rosa, you get that with Mila. 
Are they mm -hmm. the only three? Three, four? You don't get that? Did you get that with Kevin? I can't remember. You go, did you go in and talk to Melissa at once? Maybe? Well, yeah. like remember, you meet her in the stairs, you meet her in the hallway, you meet her... Yeah, you go in, in there spots. to work the puzzle. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you do. So, and then, but yeah, not with Kevin. Kevin's kind of out in the lobby-ish. Right. Sort of thing, so it's a little bit different. Oh, getting drunk somewhere else. <laughs> what does Hyde, does Hyde like, call know. him, like, dad of the year or something? Remember, he's like, where's your daughter? He's like, I think I think she's in the room. Well, I don't, what, why? Why are you asking? <laughs> it's like, yeah, dad of the dad year right dad. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's about it for me. Like, they're, they're not major, major mm. things that really, like, oh, wow, that's, that, that could have been much better. Hmm. Pretty minor overall. Okay. All right. You want to uh, get into the? Would you replay it? I certainly would. I played this. I can't remember exactly when I got it. Maybe around the 2008 time frame, something. It could have been 2007. Okay. Actually, it it could have been. Um, I do know it was a used copy that I got. It wasn't brand new, but uh, it was one of the only options I had at the time to, to, uh, of a game to mm -hmm. get. And I was like, you know, I've heard of this. And even though the cover is not all that exciting, um, looking at the back, I said, like, yeah, I want to give this a shot. Uh, and the DS still was kind of a bit of a um, novelty, right, with the touchscreen and stuff at the time. Right. And like having the microphone and so forth. And so, so, yeah, let me give this a shot. And I remember liking it quite a lot, other than having a few frustrating moments and not really having any way to find the next steps. Like I would play it, and then if uh, I didn't have internet at that point for a while, so I have to wait a whole day to maybe see if I can get some help by, through a guy mm -hmm. and stuff. But I do remember enjoying it and playing it this time. I was able to recall a lot of moments in the game. Not everything it was like, oh, that seems fresh. Like, I don't remember that. But I would definitely come back to play this again. I just don't know how long, but hopefully not as long as my uh, previous playthrough. <laughs> hopefully a much shorter mm -hmm. time. I would, I would definitely come back to it. And how about you? Um, less an indictment on the game and more of just kind of how my brain works. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder for me to really try to play something like this again. Okay. Um, probably just because, like, especially with story beat stuff, uh, and this is so incumbent on story. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it, it sticks in my head. It won't, like, be there quite on immediate recall. But it'll be one of those things that it'll slowly sift into the back of my brain. And then I would... You know, if I was to plug it back in and play, it'll be right there in my head. So I won't really, f I, I, I feel like I don't, I, it'd be really hard for me to be like, okay, let me spend all this time going through something that I'm fairly confident that I remember a good deal on. Okay. To, to do it. And like I said, it's not anything against the game. Mm -hmm. Um, if it was a book, I would reread it. I'd say that. Okay. But um, it's just it's just one of those things that like point and clicks aren't really my jam. Mm -hmm. I think part of it, like you touched upon, is the the logic of things can get kind of wonky mm -hmm. or just not not quite what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, yeah. It's, I guess that's what I, what I got. I, 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 I still enjoyed it, but it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if I would be able to really replay it. Mm. I find if I, if I leave a good chunk of time, because I hadn't played the, uh, Ace Attorney games in a while. I played them like in their initial release or close to. And then I played them, I want to say two, three years ago. So it'd been a good chunk of time. And even though mm -hmm. some of those story beats and so forth, you're like, okay, I remember this is the evidence to present here. That I got to pick up this item and so forth. There mm -hmm. were other things that were just totally foreign at that point. They were just totally out of mm -hmm. my mind. 
and I remember certain images and stuff, but being like, I don't remember exactly what I need to do at this moment. So I, you know, enjoyed playing them again, and I think that probably worked in this game's favor of not playing it for such a long time. Well, let me extend this then. Normally, I know we're trying to just kind of reflect on that one game. If, like, obviously there's a sequel to this, and if there was that third game, do you think you would proceed to play the rest of this series? Yeah, I wouldn't be against it. I, I wouldn't even be against trying out the, the, the sequel at some point. Mm-hmm. It would be, though, there still a little bit of time. I w- couldn't just play it and then jump into mm-hmm. the next one. Mm-hmm. I'd, you know, at least need a little bit of, little, little bit of time. Like, I, yeah. even yeah. with game series that I, I enjoy, like the mm-hmm. old Trails of and stuff, mm-hmm. I got, uh, I couldn't play FC and SC back to back. Like mm-hmm. I just, it's just too much, too much game and yep. stuff. It's like I need one and then yeah, get a moment and then come back to it. That's fair. Yeah, so. I, I'm very much in the same camp as you. Like a uh, big series, you know that I enjoy is the the Yakuza or like a Dragon series. If I play mm-hmm. one of those, I play it for like a year to up to two plus years. Like just mm. one game, going through it, taking my time, playing it, putting it down, playing, it, putting it down, and then I don't go to that next game for quite all, like at least probably six months to a year before I even consider going into the next one. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm well behind in the series because I, even though I, not day one one, but like early on, and it's just like I just I'm taking it slow. I also just like that being removed from all the noise. No, oh, you have to play this. It's the hot thing right now, right? And it's like, no, no, I, I'm going to get to it when I'm ready. Like, I don't need the noise of, oh, it's got all these scores and this. And I was like, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I, will, I will get to the point where I will enjoy it too. <laughs> I'm not in a right, rush. Right. Yeah, it's, that, that doesn't sell me on, on it at all. Mm. Of, oh, it's, this is the super duper game. It's like, okay, that's nice. Just sucks that you have to buy well, some games day one because... You'll never find them after that, right? Or then soloed mm. permanently forever if you don't buy them right so away. All my games are now digital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite ready for that, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's... Well, I'm glad we were able to get through Hotel Dusk. I know we're, we've got something in mind to follow this up, and it's going to be very different from, from this type of game. But thanks for taking a chance on it and giving it a play. Yeah, thank you for selecting it and all that fun, fun jazz. Um, I'm having a brain fart. I get to mention the next one, don't I? I yeah, if you uh, want. Yeah, go for it. Keeping the, we're, no. I, didn't, I don't think we were keeping it a secret. Were we? No, we were. We, I just think uh, we hadn't really. Uh, okay, the way you phrased it, I was like. Oh, I think no. the last one we did, we hadn't had the game selected at that point, but this time we do. So. Uh, okay, yeah. So for the, for the next game, we're going to go through Castlevania Bloodlines. Mm-hmm. Because I've not, I, I've beaten like two stages on it, <laughs> so I want to go through it and actually, that's got to, I got to beat it, got to beat that game. And you're a Castlevania so. man, so <laughs> right. Well, traditional Castlevania, I, I suppose. My my Castlevania honor is at stake. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that that aside, if. Uh, have any sort of comments, concerns, or uh, funny Kyle Hyde memes you can point me to? Please <laughs> let me know. I I enjoy I enjoy some of those those uh, those Hyde images. They are they're quite comical to me. So and uh, of course, let's not have thought of the game and everything. Uh, and if the the plot twist really really kept it to you, or maybe it was something that you're just like eh. No, I just didn't really jive with it. So uh, that's it from me. And then any last things you want to add there? Uh, no, I like you said, I would be very much uh, open to getting some more Kyle Hyde uh, quotes and lines because there's some winners. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, for Sushi and myself, uh, thanks for listening. Have a good day. <laughs>